Six games, Monday, NBA. Let's look ahead to them. What are we looking at with injuries? Who's in, who's out? What things do we need to pay attention to? And gulp streaming, I guess. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and the penis mightier. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball, and on Instagram at LockedOnFantasyBasketball. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs, which helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNBA. That is LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are, of course, available on all platforms. I don't know if you're aware, but Thursday, February the 8th is the trade deadline. And I'm not sure if you're aware as well, but I have a live show Thursday, February the 8th, 1 p.m. Eastern. It's bloody early here. So if I'm getting up early, you guys are going to join me. We want 20,000 people in there. I want you to pre-bang that show. It's going to be up the top there on the link. It's linked in the audio description as well. Go ahead and get that to 1,500 pre-bangs. We want a lot of people watching, and we're going to break down the trade deadline as things happen. We are here now to talk about... um, Talk about the games on Monday. There are six of them on Monday, so a pretty low volume day. And I'm just going to again throw this out here. Please be very cautious and save your waiver wire ads. Prioritize flexibility. Yes, add somebody that there is value for rest of season or long term. Do that. But don't be like, oh, I need to scrounge a game here for Monday or look at the Monday, Tuesday, or whatever. Unless you have seven ads for the week unless you have unlimited ads for the week. If you're running on four or less, do not use your waiver ads to stream, which again, I'm trying to cut off my own show here because this is a show about looking ahead, the daily streaming. I'm still going to give you those options because there are people that won't apply to in terms of saving the ads for the week um, because they'll have seven or they'll have unlimited or whatever. But those of you with three or four ads for a week, do not use them to get an extra game on Monday or Tuesday, do not do that. It is just a waste of those resources, which are precious, and there will be more streaming options open at the end of the week. There'll be more of them. Let's look at injuries. This stuff is always evolving, so I'm giving you the information as I have it right now, and things will change during the day, of course, and even as in in the process of me um, recording this show, there are injuries that have uh, cropped up for tomorrow that we uh, that I was unaware of when I was uh, you know, preparing everything here. So Derek Lively is going to be out. He's having that surgery on his nose to hopefully um, fix it up so he doesn't miss more time. So I'm going to guess he's out Monday, Tuesday. Lamelo Ball, who knows, man? Like, he's out on Sunday. Will he play Monday? At this point, with this disgusting organization, I'm just going to guess that he's not playing. But I don't know. Same with Gordon Hayward. I don't know. Because why would we update anything on that team? Why does anybody support that team? I get it. They're your local team. So you, you do support it, right? But... They just need to be held to account. It's ridiculous what is going on here. Uh, is Lamel- I, I, I don't know what is actually happening here with Ball. Ridiculous. Dayron Sharp remains out for Brooklyn. His return should be coming pretty soon. Chris Paul is out. And I did have Moses Moody there as listed out, but Moses Moody is actually um, off the injury report. After they gave us an update last week saying, yeah, like he's going to be reevaluated another week. So nah, actually just joking, he's back. Cool. Like, what? why these teams continue to do this remains baffling to me. Andy Wiggins is doubtful after spraining his ankle last game. That's moving him into drop zone. I'm pretty sure about that. Kyrie and Dante Exum, they have missed. Obviously, Kyrie, who was missing zero games due to his thumb issue, has missed six in a row. Of course, of course he has. Um, he, I'm going to list him question. I don't know that for sure. Uh, same with Dante Exum, who... Has injuries all through his NBA career, came out, shot 45% from three, and has barely played since Christmas. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, really worried about where, where he goes from here. Toby Harris did not practice, but they have officially listed him questionable. So that is a little concerned that he's not, that he's not practicing. Nick Batum is, has been ruled out. 
So we do know that. And so is DeAnthony Melton. So we weren't sure about those two. But Batum with his hamstring tightness uh, is out again. That's a, that's a week out. Just again, say he's got a grade one, grade one hamstring strain. And he's going to be out one to two weeks. Just this nebulous soreness, tightness. It's ridiculous. Anyway, he's out. Melton's out with his back. He is coming back soon, I'm guessing. Um, but who knows? Like, we don't know. This team is a complete mess as usual. Sasha Vizenkov, we're going to guess his questionable, but he's just not really going to play the huge amount there. Cody Martin got ruled out on Sunday for the Hornets. It is a back-to-back, so maybe that's part of it. Maybe he plays on Monday. I've got him questionable. Sadiq Bay is dealing with an ankle problem, so I'm listing him questionable. The Hawks are actually listing him questionable. DeAndre Hunter is also listed questionable too, which is uh, a little interesting given that it's not a back-to-back for Atlanta. Um, so I'm not really sure why that's the case. Did they rush him back too early? Who's to say? Me. Uh, Wes Matthews also questionable for the Hawks. And Clint Capella is out. I didn't list it because he's going to be out for 10 days. I talked about this on the Waiver Wire show earlier today. I think that there is like a greater than 50% chance that Okongwu starts. Well, he's obviously starting now. I think there's a greater than 50% chance that he starts the rest of the way. That's a gut feeling, nothing more. If it's Zubats, um, even though his reevaluation date was like eight days in the future, he is listed questionable. Uh, he's actually, sorry, he's playing on Sunday, but I don't know why or how that is possible, but he is. But I'm going to list him questionable for Monday because it is a back-to-back, so I think he probably does sit. Dorian Finney-Smith dealing with that ankle sprain for the Brooklyn Nets. I did have him questionable, but he has been ruled out. Ben Simmons has also been ruled out. First game of a back-to-back for the Nets. Simmons was always going to sit one of those ones coming back from this back issue plus the knee issue. He was always going to sit one of them. And the one that he is sitting here is Monday along with Finney Smith and Daron Sharp is out there as well. Dennis Smith missed the last game. He's been upgraded to probable. So more value there in old Dennis. And it obviously helps boost the value of a Spencer Dinwiddie in that spot. Herb Jones is questionable for the Pelicans. He did practice. So did Larry Nance. They both were able to get in a practice. Rowan Barrett is questionable for Sunday's game. So I'm going to list him questionable for Monday's game as he looks to return from that knee problem. Jonte Porter uh, has been ruled out for Sunday's game. So I'm going to list him questionable for Monday's game. Paul Reed was allegedly ill, uh, according to self-branded hat legend Nick Nurse on for the game on Sunday. Uh, so for the game on Saturday, uh, Reed was ill. Um, so I did put him on the list as probable, but he is off the injury report entirely, so he's available. Dario Saric is probable with an illness, and the only one there, we got again, I updated there with Moses Moody uh, being available and ready to play for the Golden State Warriors after yeah, having that evaluation date. Cool. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. Small businesses, you're hiring, you've got to get the right candidates in. It's vital, right? You've got so many things to do as a small business owner or a manager that uh, if you don't pay attention to the right things like hiring the right staff, well, things can go downhill really quickly. But sometimes you can't devote that correct time and that's where LinkedIn Jobs comes in. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. It has a vast network of more than 1 billion professionals that you can stick your job ad out in front of and it makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to those professionals that you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. LinkedIn knows that small business owners are wearing so many hats and you might not have the time or the proper resources to devote to getting the right hires or the right process with your hires. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even have just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That is linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. You can post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Today's episode is also brought to you by Better Help. We just sometimes need to get things off our chest, right? Something big, something small, whatever. It might, might be something that you're annoyed about your team. Maybe it's the Charlotte Hornets. And you're like, why does this team continually um, flush seasons down the toilet with horrendous injury reports showing disrespect for their fans? And you want to rant to someone. Maybe that would be me that I would like to speak to someone about that. Maybe you've got your own thing that is bothering you at the moment. It doesn't have to be big. doesn't have to be small. Whatever it is. Sometimes things just get to us and we need to work a way through it. So therapy can do that. Therapy is different for everybody. Sometimes you have real, big, massive, serious problems. And therapy is good for that. Sometimes it's small things which impacts your everyday life in a way that it really shouldn't. So talking it out with someone who's got an unbiased view is a way to go about that. So if you've been thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on MBA to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P, 
dot com slash locked on NBA. All right, so we've done that. Let's have a look at who the two teams are who have got the back-to-back Monday to Tuesday. It is Brooklyn and it is Dallas. So if you are in a position where you don't waste waiver ads and you're looking to stream someone in to get more games in, we're looking at the Nets, Lonnie Walker, very interesting guy there. You're looking at the Mavs, which who knows, probably Muxy Kleber, although there's risk he sits one of those. Derek Jones, Josh Green, Tim Hardaway, who knows what Kyrie's going to do. Does Luca play both? I've got no idea. Mavs are one where there could be a ton of um, uh, value, but there also could be absolutely zero because of the way they run things. So let's look at streams of the day. I am going with Paul Reed, and you'll tell me that Paul Reed is trash and Paul Reed needs to be dropped immediately, and I'll tell you that I disagree. And you know what? That is totally reasonable. I talked about Paul Reed at length on the Waiver Wire show earlier today. I'm not going to go back into it again. I just firmly believe he should be rostered in all leagues, and if he is available on your wire, well, he is going to probably be the best option in a 10-team league tomorrow. I've got Brandon Pajemski there as a 12-teamer. The absence of Andrew Wiggins bumps his value up significantly. I don't know what happens when Wiggins is back or when Paul is there or Peyton is there and now Moses Moody is back. Pajemski's shown himself to be awesome and he should be playing 30 a night, but he doesn't always. So just watch him. For the 14-teamer, I'm going with Torian Prince. We know that Jared Vanderbilt bar is out. Prince moved to the bench last game and played 33 minutes anyway. He's a good deeper league stream. And then for 16 teams, it is Mo Bumba, who will get like his 16, 17 minutes a night. He can push to 23. He can have the red hot scoring nights. He can have the big block nights. It's not going to be consistent, but when we're talking 16 teamers, he's in the rotation and he's a good per minute player. For Yahoo and ESPN points, we're looking at guys who are available over 60% of leagues and Brandon Pajemski is the name that comes up for both of those scoring formats. Dallas Philly is the uh, first game of the day. No early game, standard 7 p.m. Eastern time start. Muxy Kleber's the guy I am looking in at Dallas. He was awesome last game. He played 30 minutes. Uh, do I? Muxy Kleber used to be this guy that four, three years ago, if he played 30 minutes, but this guy is going to be awesome. Multi-blocks, multi-threes, he rebounds, he can pass the Lily scores. Like He's an unbelievable top 100 fantasy player in 30 minutes. And you might not remember that because he didn't play that those many minutes that often, but he was. But the last couple of years, the shot has fallen away. The shot blocking's dropped off. The injuries have caught up to him. And then he flashed, not just Primo, but he flashed some real, like that old school value of Maxi Kleber last game, which makes it go, hmm, do we go back to him? Because they DNP'd Rashawn Holmes. Do they DNP Rashawn Holmes again? Is Kleber the guy? Maybe. I'm very interested. I'm very interested to see what he brings. I've got Paul Reed there because we just want to watch it again. I've got no problem admitting that if I'm if I'm wrong on Reed, if they play him 18 minutes a night again, um, then that will become more of a pattern, right? But again, he has started 11, 12 games this season and he averages 25 minutes a night. So the pattern is that he plays 25 to 26 minutes a night as a starter. That can change, but it hasn't been a problem so far. So let's see what happens. In terms of streams, Muxy Kleber is, is the Dallas guy and Mo Bamba. Again, we're using a 39% cutoff here for the stream guy. So reads above that, but we're looking at Muxy Kleber and Muhammad Bamba as a Cote d'Ivoire legend, we're looking at those guys as the stream options. Sac- suck, Sacramento? Sacramento and Cleveland. It's so hard with this team. And I'll tell you what's hard about it is that Mike Brown has a really itchy trigger finger. We saw it a lot last season and we're seeing it this season. And we're seeing the ups and downs between Leaky Monk and Kevin Herter. Leaky Monk was playing 29 minutes a night. He was dominating. And then Brown went, nah, 14 for you. Herter's on a hot streak and Herter's going to play 34. Put 38 game, 38 minutes, two games ago, Kevin Herter, or three games ago. And now Monk's back to 27, Herter's back to 26, and Keegan Murray's pushed down the, the pecking order. It's all over the shop, and it's a consistent thing. So it's it's consistent in its inconsistency. But at the moment, the Leaky Monk rise is back on. So we're back on Leaky Monk. We're back off Kevin Herter. And when that switches back over, we switch back over as well. For the Cavs, Jarrett Allen was putting up really big numbers. Now, I'm going to come out and disagree with Donovan Mitchell, who thinks that Jarrett Allen got snubbed for the All-Star break. Like, bro, come on. Like, No, no, he's nowhere near that All-Star level, in my opinion. Um, but he has been really, really good. What was interesting that with Darius Garland back, he only, who he didn't have a single assist last game. And we're still getting Evan Mobley and Darius Garland minutes limits. But I, I want to see Allen, the usage, the rebound rate, and that assist rate, which, again, was that thing that bumped him from a top 30 guy into a top 10 player in that absence with players out. Stream guys, it is probably Trey Lyles for the guys who are available in 60 plus percent, which is not a huge amount. And then Isaac Okoro in Cleveland. It's absolutely nothing uh, exciting. It's absolutely nothing reliable. And again, we're not really wasting waiver ads on these guys. 
The Lakers and the Hornets. We've got no Jared Vanderbilt bar for the Lakers, but I want to pay attention to D'Angelo Russell because we saw D'Angelo Russell start this season and be pretty good. We saw D'Angelo Russell get his minutes limited significantly and be terrible. We saw D'Angelo Russell get Russell get benched for the second time in eight months and play like under 20 minutes a night. And I was like, they don't believe in him. This is a second benching. He struggles a lot. I don't really buy him as a player. I don't think teams are trading for him to be a starter. And I said, I, I would be okay dropping him. And then, of course, I look stupid because after that, for whatever reason, they said, no, nah, you know what? D'Lo's actually going to be our leading usage player. He's going to play 40 minutes a night and he's going to shoot 60% from three. Because, of course, why wouldn't that happen? There's logic that follows that. And then he dominated, right? And I looked absolutely idiotic for that. And now the last couple of games, last three games, sort of pushing back to the, oh uh, yeah, like D'Lo, lower minutes, shooting's way off. Are they deprioritizing him? I don't know. He's been under 30 minutes, I think, in two of his last three games. The shooting has been way off again because you couldn't maintain that level. So I don't really know where he sits. We're still holding him at this point. I'm not going to make that mistake again. But honestly, I just don't view him as that guy. He's always going to be, hey, you're on a hot streak. Let's sell high sort of a player. For the um, Hornets, it is a back-to-back for them. So honestly, who knows? Who knows? In terms of streams, we're going with Torian Prince there in LA. And I've got Ish Smith there with an asterisk. They've started Ish Smith in the game on Sunday, but that's because Lamelo is out and Cody Martin is out. I don't know whether Lamelo is going to play on Monday. I don't know if Cody Martin's going to play on Monday. But if they're out, then Ish and Nick Smith become streaming options for us there. But of course, we are unaware of whatever foolishness is going to be uh, foist upon us by them. Today's episode is also brought to you by Fan Jewel Sportsbook. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. Well, at least one week from Super Bowl Sunday from your friends and uh, America's number one sportsbook, of course, which is Fanjul, me, authorized spokesperson. If you are like me, Super Bowl Sunday is about so many things. It's watching the game, of course, but it's uh, getting your food ready, getting your snacks ready. What's your snack go-to of choice? Not that Fanjul provides snacks, but we're setting the scene here. What do you what do you would like? A nachos person? You going for wings? What is it that you're going for? Popcorn? That seems to be down the list of favorites. But what you can also do is once you get all that stuff sorted, you can get your Super Bets sorted for Super Bowl 58. And it's one last chance to get a couple of W's in for football season. Who do you think is going to win? Who's the MVP? Is it anyone who's not a quarterback? I doubt it, but you never know. All of these options are available to you over at Fangio. If you're a new customer, you can get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. So go to fangio.com slash locked on to sign up. That is fangio.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with Fangio, an official sports book, partner of the NFL, and don't forget to gamble responsibly. Okay, after that Lakers-Hornets game, let's go to the Clippers and the Hawks. This is a back-to-back for the Clippers. I would guess there is a risk of Paul George sitting this game, given that he's had this minutes limit with his groin. So just be aware of that. I don't know that for certain. They haven't said anything, but I think there is a risk of this, obviously. Um, and then for the Hawks, it's about Anyeka Okongwu. Clint Capella is out with an abdominal strain. Okongwu was awesome last game. He was awesome the game before that. He's consistently getting more minutes than Capella, despite coming off the bench and he's playing alongside him. The absence of Sadiq Bay and the minutes limit of Hunter has been helping Okongwu, but now it's just his chance. And I do think, again, I do think that he has a massive chance here of holding onto this job long-term. I don't know. Is it copium, as the kids say? Is it maybe hopium, as the kids say? Or is it just me trying to see what's going to happen? Uh, you cannot, cannot leave... A Kongwu on a waiver wire. And we talk about saving waiver ads. This is one that you don't save it on. He's available in 36% of leagues in Yekara Kongwu. So you go and add him. And we see what happens. Stream guys, it's probably Plumley because I do expect that Zubats, who is playing Sunday, sits on Monday. So Plumley maybe is a stream guy, but it's pretty tenuous. And then in Atlanta, yes. Yes, Alperen Shingun's dad, Bruno Fernando, is the stream option for those deeper leagues. Field goal percentage guy, rebound guy, and can get some blocks because he's going to have to play because they don't have any other centers behind a Kongwu. The next game we look at is the Golden State Warriors and the Brooklyn Nets. Brandon Pajemski is the guy I want to watch. He's been awesome the last couple of games. The minutes are up, and I expect with Wiggins out that his minutes remain up. Does he start? He probably should. I don't know that he will, but he probably should. There is the added complication, complication of the return of Moses Moody, but I don't think... That's going to be too much of a problem. Pajemski is going to be pretty strong, and we, we like his value here. The other one I've got there is Cam Thomas, because Cam Thomas is absolutely dominating at the moment. He is flying. And, again, you know what I think of Cam Thomas. Or so maybe you don't. I 
have hated watching Cam Thomas play. I hate his style. I hate his absolute ball dominance, apathy on defense, lack of passing, and just taking every shot as a mid-range too. All his impact stats were all, all horrible, right? They were terrible. I said quite a while ago, two months ago, a month ago, whatever it was, that he was a droppable player, right? Without, I didn't have any hesitation about that. And again, people will get angry at that because obviously at the moment, Cam Thomas is flying. I also said two, two and a half weeks ago that Thomas is pushing back up. You should be adding him right now because the way that the Nets media is talking had a different tenor to it and they were going to get more minutes into him. That I, I did pick that one and that was right, right? But I do want to just highlight something with Thomas is that he is one of the most red hot and ice cold players in the NBA because there was a period where, where I started to say, yeah, I think he's droppable, which is basically from the end of November through to the 23rd of January. That's, that's that time frame where he wasn't playing very well at all. In that time, Cam Thomas was the 232nd ranked player per game value for category leagues. That was 26 games of the season. Cam Thomas has played 39 games this season. So, he has been outside the top 200 for over two-thirds of the season. Outside the top 230 for over two-thirds of the season. So, when I say, yeah, I think he's a drop, it's because of that. Like, Can you hold that for that long? Maybe some of you can, and you're happy that it's panned out. The thing is that when he gets red hot, like his last six games, he's top 20 because he's hitting 54% from the field. He's hitting his uh, threes at 42%. His usage is ridiculously high still, and he's getting a lot of minutes. And I think there is a shot at some of this sticking, not the shooting necessarily, but the minutes. But once that shooting falls away, which it will, everything falls off. And again, for two-thirds of the season, he was basically unrosterable in in like 18-team leagues. So again, just wanted to provide context about the extreme highs and the extreme lows of Cam Thomas. Pajemski's the stream for the Warriors there. And I think Lonnie Walker's probably the stream here for the Nets, who's been on fire. The minutes are up. I have a little bit of skepticism about Lonnie's ability to maintain what he's doing now because, well, he's never done it. So I'm going to have skepticism around that and finding enough minutes. But with Simmons out, Finney Smith out, there's plenty of opportunity here for Lonnie to be able to produce and at least be streamable if you're in an unlimited stream type situation. His last three games, Lonnie Walker, 29 minutes, 19 points. Um, 40% from three, totally reasonable to continue. What he's just been doing is getting a lot more minutes. And the other thing that's very interesting is almost five assists he's averaging, which is not a Lonnie Walker special. He's usually a putrid rebound and putrid assist guy. The rebounds are still terrible, 2.3. The other thing he's also doing is getting a ton of steals. He's had five steals over his last five games and he's averaged 0.7 for the season. So everything is just unbelievably elevated. You take advantage of it and we see where it ends up. The Toronto Raptors and the New Orleans Pelicans back-to-back for Toronto. We're really watching where the Pirtle plays and how much he plays and then if RJ Barrett returns. Valanchunas is the interesting one for me with the Pelicans. Um, With Zion out, he played 33 minutes. With Larry Nance out, he played 27 minutes. Nance is questionable here, so do we go back to 24 minutes of Valanchunas if Nance is available? Or does he push back to the higher minutes? That I don't know. For the stream, guys, it's Gary Trent or Bruce Brown. Um, the deeper leagues, you're looking to grade A Dick in that spot or even Thad Young because Porter might be out and maybe Pirtle sits. So there could be some options that are opening up for Toronto. And then the Dustbuster Dyson Daniels for the Pelicans is a, a deeper league stream guy. We saw last game that Jose Alvarado went crazy for them. Actually played like I think 18 second half minutes. D- Daniels is ahead of a Jordan Hawkins in the rotation at the moment. And yeah, he's a nice little yeah, assists and mainly steals sort of stream guy. We're going to go back to the traditional chunk portion of the show now, Monday through Friday. All days are quality game days. Remembering, Thursday is the trade deadline, so the values on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday are going to be their own little island section. Four completely weird days where players that are traded aren't on their new teams. So teams are running skeleton rotations with big minutes to players that will never touch the floor again. Or then at the end of the weekend, the Saturday, Sunday, you might get guys joining their new teams and completely changing those rotations and coaches trying to figure out what to do. It is a very strange portion of the season. Um, so just be aware that everything you might have, you might have 60 players value get upended over that Thursday period. So who are we streaming? Jalen Suggs, Tuesday streaming, of course, under the, with the understanding that be cautious. But I'll say this, if Jalen Suggs is available, he's just an ad anyway. 
He's got a Tuesday Thursday uh, game across or th- Tuesday Thursday games, both all, all quality games. It's only two, but that's how good he is. He's better than all of the three game guys. And the same goes with Ayo Dusumu, Tuesday Tuesday and Thursday. These are guys that if you they are on your wire, I'd be more than happy to add them. I, I don't care about prioritizing that ad for the deadline or for the end of the week. They are the better options than that versus like I'm going to stream a one game Lonnie Walker. Or a two-game Lonnie Walker, whatever. That's not worth it. Pajemski's got the Monday, Wednesday, Thursday combo, the three games in four nights. That's really strong. His value is a little, little iffy to me as a must roster for categories. In points, I'm, I'm there, but cat- categories, I'm not sure, but whatever. Trey Murphy's got the Monday, Wednesday, Friday combination. While he's not a must roster player in 10s or 12 team leagues, that's a nice little schedule bump for him. And that should be available if you've got that unlimited waiver streaming ability. Al Horford's there Wednesday, Friday. Again, the two games for him is good enough. But, you know, is he worth an ad to burn? Probably not. Uh, and then the pencil, Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the Kings go. Barnes is very fringe for 12-team leagues. I probably wouldn't waste an ad on getting Barnes to stream in. But, you know, if you're in a 14-teamer, he is worth having in that scenario. And you might want him if he's available because he probably can maintain long-term value. Again, before we get into talking about the, the list of streams, I'll remind you, please be very careful with your waiver ads. Hold your waiver ads as much as possible if you're in a standard four ads per week scenario, unless an Okongwu pops up, a Paul Reed pops up. That's the sort of player that we, hold, that we do use an add-on. We don't do it to stream in a one-game Muxy Cleaver. That's not what we're using these ads for. So, 10 team streams for the day. We're going to Paul Reed. Nick Richards, still available. That's one of the ones, again, just should be rostered. Uh, Brandon Pajemski, I'm borderline on that one. Trey Murphy, good stream, not a must. Norman Powell, great stream. Max Struess, not even sure he's a must roster guy at this point, especially not in tens. He'd be a streamable option. Your 12-team guys, again, always look at the 10-team list, then move across to the 12. We've got Mason Plumley there. Not feeling super good about that. Mo Bamba, Torian Prince, Lonnie Walker, Royce O'Neill, and Muxy Kleber. And you'll notice, after those first six names that we chucked up on the 10-team stream list, the next bunch of guys, not particularly enticing, who are mostly going to be available in 12s. Meaning, again, with only six games on, there's not these awesome, unbelievable stream options that are definitely going to push me over the edge. They're not there. Um... Deep league streams, we've got Derek Jones, there's Bruno Fernando there, uh, Isaac Okoro, Dwight Powell, Pat Beverly, and the crucifix, Christian Wood. Lastly, for points leagues, Brandon Pajemski's there. I think he is worth an add in a points league and, and a hold. Um, Lonnie Walker, Mason Plumley, Torian Prince, Mo Bamba, and Rui Hachimura, remembering all of these guys are available in 61% of leagues or more. Hachimura, definitely way more value in a points league format. And that brings us to the end of the Daily Look Ahead show. I hope that my thoughts on what to do with waiver ads is clear. I'm pretty sure it is. And that trade deadline's creeping up on us. We are almost there. We are four days away. So come and join me and pre-bang over on the Thursday, February the 8th, 1 p.m. Uh, time, time frame. Go and put it in your calendar. Go and put it in your bookmarks. And just go and comment. Comment on the video. We haven't, no one's commented on it yet. Go and comment on the video. And we'll uh, get everything exciting happening. Guys, we're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.